Semiconductor companies, semiconductor stocks have gotten a lot of attention in the last year or so, and for good reason. The rise of AI, the need for more computing, the need for more data centers, and especially the need for more chips. Silicon. Silicon will be everywhere you look. In every device we are using already today, there is silicon in every device we're going to use tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and years to come, there's going to be a need for more and more semiconductor chips. And so that's why you've seen semiconductor companies and their stock, their valuation go up. Now, of course, those companies are cyclical, meaning sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down. Last year, there was a bit of weakness, especially in the smartphone industry. And so you've seen weakness in some of those businesses as well. Now, usually we talk about AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel, right? Three popular names, big players as well, and for the good reasons. Or you talk about ASML, TSMC, two giants in a monopoly, duopoly type of area. But in this video, I want to focus on three other semiconductor companies that maybe do not get the same amount of attention as the others. And so I'll start with the first one. I think you're pretty familiar with this name, and that's Qualcomm. Now, Qualcomm right now has a market cap of $170.33 billion. Last year, it returned 27.41%, plus it also pays a 2.10% dividend yield. The company is also buying back shares. We're going to look at that in a second. But right now, I mean, if you look at valuation, yes, compared to its five-year mean, we are a bit of the same, maybe a bit more expensive. If you look at forward PE, V2 EBITDA price to sales, still in my opinion, forward PE of 16.5 times, not that expensive. And if you look at price to free cash flow, that's in the last 12 months, sitting at 17.3 times, in my opinion, not that expensive. Now looking at shares outstanding, in the last 10 years, shares outstanding have been reduced by 34%. And so as a result as well, you see here free cash flow per share going up over the years and that allows the company to reward investors with a nice dividend payout and more buybacks now currently there are 31 analysts covering this company with the average price target sitting at 151 dollars so it's basically flat to where we're at right now now what are the analysts expecting for the coming quarter which i believe will be released next week so with regards to sales expectations are at the midpoint 9.5 billion dollars which represents basically 0.7% year-over-year increase, but a close to 10% quarter-over-quarter increase. As for net income year-over-year, -year, that's basically down 0.6% to $2.66 billion. Quarter-over-quarter, -quarter, nice reacceleration there, 17.16%. As for adjusted net income margin, that sits at 28%. With regards to EPS adjusted, $2.37, that's up 17.4% quarter over quarter, basically flat year over year. With regards to gap, that's down close to 4% year over year, but up 44.11% quarter over quarter. Now we know why 2023 was a weakish year for that company, weakness in the handheld market, weakness in the smartphone market. Most of the industry leaders are expecting a nice rebound in 2024. There's also some good momentum with regards to 5G. We're nowhere near the end of that, let's say, wave. And then, and then there is another thing specifically for Qualcomm. Of course, we've talked about the AR, VR applications, VR products with regards to Meta. Meta Quest 2, Meta Quest 3 is using a Qualcomm chip, but other players out there, such as Samsung, will also come out with a Qualcomm chip. Now, last year, Qualcomm has surprised a lot of people when they announced this. The Snapdragon X Elite, the AI supercharged platform to revolutionize the PC. The Snapdragon X Elite platform features the custom integrated Qualcomm Orion CPU, the new CPU leader in mobile computing, and delivers up to two times faster CPU performance versus the competition, matching competitor peak performance with one third of the power. Now, Intel is also coming out with their own AI PC chip, because why? Why would all the computing power stay at the data centers in the cloud when that can be managed locally on your PC, on your laptop? You're going to see a lot more of those chips coming out, 
but this is definitely something to look out for. Now, before jumping into semiconductor company number two, if you enjoy these type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if not, we we'll really appreciate that. Want to support me even further? Do check out the link down in the description and a pinned comment to get a top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. Now, company number two here is Micron, Micron Technology, ticker symbol MU. This company has a market cap of $98.3 billion, Ford PE 66.9 times. And over the past year, the stock is up 53.3%. Now here as well, you can see that purely looking at valuation and nothing else, meaning no business momentum, no cyclicality, demand, supply, you're probably thinking, well, this just doesn't make any sense. It's super expensive. Why should I touch that? Well, I'll explain in just a bit. Now here as well, we can see that 2023 was not a great year for the company. You can see here free cash flow per share has come down drastically. At the moment, there are 37 analysts covering this company with an average price target of $96, representing close to 8% upside from the price we're at today. And now what are the analysts expecting for the coming fiscal years? Well, here you can clearly see, I mean, look at the growth for fiscal year 2025, year over year sales growth of 40%, which is a bit like fiscal year 2024, where sales growth is 45.5%, but EPS is a loss here, whereas in fiscal year 2025, we're at $6.49, and then fiscal year 2026, another 9% year over year growth for sales, and another close to 13% growth for EPS. And that is why this company has been on the list because you're not buying what has happened last year, you're buying what is happening right now and in the next coming years. And so one of Micron's peers estimates that the demand for high bandwidth memory or HBM chips, which are deployed in AI servers, could increase at an impressive annual rate of 82% through 2027. Samsung has also seen its order for HBM double in 2023. Now the good news for Micron is all set to capitalize on the fast-growing HPM opportunity with the help of NVIDIA. Why is that? Well, Micron Management recently pointed out that its latest generation of HBM chips is in the final stages of qualification for NVIDIA's GH200 Grace Hopper Superchip and the upcoming H200 AI Graphics Processing Unit, or GPU, which are set to launch this year. I'll add even more here. So according to market research firm CounterPoint Research, sales of generative AI-powered smartphones could hit 100 million units in 2024. The firm estimates that this market could clock annual growth of 83% through 2027, with a cumulative 1 billion generative AI-enabled smartphones expected to be sold over the next five years. Now, we've talked about smartphones having a weakish momentum right now. And it's because, let's be honest, you're already paying so much money for a great device. Times have passed where we needed, we needed. We wanted to upgrade our devices each and every year because these devices got substantially better. Over the last couple of years, the devices have stayed approximately the same and you were paying sometimes even more. But in the years to come, we're going to get AI chips in our devices, AI capabilities on our devices as well, and that might increase, let's say, the refresh cycle. Of course, that could benefit companies like Qualcomm and Micron as well. Now, last quarter, these were the numbers reported by Micron, so revenue of $4.7 billion with a gross margin of 1%, so non-gap results. But in the different segments here, you can see that compute and networking that's up 45% quarter over quarter, down 1% year over year, basically flat-ish, to $1.73 billion. Mobile is up 7% quarter over quarter and 97% year over year to $1.29 billion. Embedded, around $1 billion, up 21% quarter over quarter, 4% year over year. Storage, down 12% quarter over quarter and down 4% year over year. This is the smallest part of their business, $653 million. Now, since adjusted free cash flow was negative, they suspended temporarily suspended buybacks. But from fiscal year 2021 to fiscal quarter one 2024, they basically 
spent $4.1 billion towards repurchasing 60 million shares and $5.2 billion returned to shareholder from share repurchases and dividends. So once we're going to see free cash flow back in the positive side of things, you could expect buybacks to start again. Now moving on to semiconductor company number three is one that a lot of my viewers have mentioned throughout the last couple of weeks and months in my comments and that's Supermicro Computer. Now Supermicro Computer designs and manufactures high performance server and storage solutions. They are especially known for their motherboards, chassis and server management software. You might say what's so special about that, what's their mode? Well, first of all, the fact that they partner up with the likes of NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel tells you already a lot. So they got the brand reputation, deep technological expertise, high customization and vertical integration, focus on energy efficiency, and of course, if you want to start and compete with them right now, it's virtually impossible. I mean, to start from the ground up and compete with such a company, good luck with that. Now, currently, as you can see, the stock is up 513% year over year, has a market cap of just under $25 billion. Forward PE, despite being up so much, Forward PE is just under 21 times. Of course, compared to its mean, which is much lower, 11.7 times, it might seem super expensive. But there is a reason why this thing has gone up so much in a short period of time which I'll explain in a second, but you can already see here free cash flow per share in 2023 has basically exploded year over year. And moving forward, the estimates here are quite promising. Looking at the analysts here, there are currently 11 analysts covering this company. The average price target sits at $392.15, representing close to 11% downside from the price we're at today. Now, if we're looking at what the analysts are currently expecting for the coming fiscal years, we can see here that fiscal year 2024, sales growth of 61.42% year over year, EPS basically the same. For fiscal year 2025, 16.4% year over year growth for sales and 17.26% year over year growth for EPS. Moving on to fiscal year 2026, we see an acceleration in growth at the bottom line, 22.64% EPS, and with regards to sales, 7.47% growth year over year. So what has recently happened? Well, they provided a business update with regards to the second quarter. These are preliminary results. The expected range right now for net sales is $3.6 billion to $3.65 billion. The previous one was $2.7 to $2.9 billion. So you already have here a huge bump in expectations for the top line. Let's have a look at gap diluted net income per common share. Right now expected range $5, let's say at the midpoint. Previously $4, basically one extra dollar per share here. Non-gap, a bit of the same story. So again, this might be a type of NVIDIA guidance reaction that we've seen last year, but this time with super microcomputers. Now, last thing here with the graph, just for super microcomputer because they already released their preliminary results, which gave the stock a huge, huge bump, which means that right now we are overbought. So if you're sitting on the sidelines thinking, hmm, I like the company, but I do think it's up by too much, then here are the moving averages. You've got the 20 at $332, the 50 at $303, and the 200 at just under $250. Again, just because these are the moving averages doesn't mean that the stock will retract to those numbers because the results speak for themselves. The business itself is seeing accelerated growth top and bottom line, as we've seen it in Nvidia, just because it's shot up extremely fast doesn't mean suddenly we're going to see a drop just because of technical analysis. No, sometimes the business accelerates much, much faster than the stock, and so the stock will have to play catch up. But I understand those that would love to buy when things are red rather than extremely green. So those are the three semiconductor companies I wanted to talk about in this video. Let me know if you own any of those down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.